What's up? Welcome to the quarantine. I'm your host, Wolf, and today I'm going to be taking a look at a game called The Others Seven Sins by Cool Many or Not. Now, The Others is a game that plays two to five players, plays in approximately 90 minutes, which I would say is about accurate, and is rated for 14 plus, if I remember right, which I guess, given the theme, that's about accurate. Now, the theme of The Others is it's basically the biblical apocalypse. You have the seven deadly sins, and then you have the avatars that represent those seven deadly sins. So, like, lust has their avatars of lust, greed has avatars of greed, so on and so forth. And they have basically came to the, uh, came to the surface, and now they're just trying to wipe out humanity. And the players play an agent, uh, agents of faith, which is kind of like a Hellboy-style group of misfits, you know, demons and people with supernatural abilities and soldiers, stuff like that, and they're all crammed together, and they are sent out to fight these sins and beat them back. Now, it is an objective-based game where throughout the course of the game you're going to be completing objectives and going, and, and once you complete all the objectives, then you've won as faith. As the sins player, if you kill all the players n a certain number of times, then you win. The game resembles this game similar to like Zombie Side and stuff like that, but with its own unique twist. So let's just dive straight over to the uh, overview, shall we? All right, I do have to start off by saying, as usual, this is a review, it's not a tutorial. So I may miss a few rules or I may gloss over some entirely, uh, but this video is meant to give you the general idea of how the game is played, plus my thoughts on it, so that way you can make the decision whether or not the game is right for you. I do have to also have to say, I kickstarted this game, so I have all seven sins plus everything else that came with the Kickstarter. Um, and then on top of that, the sins that come with the base game are sloth and pride. I am using lust, and I'll explain a little bit more why later, but right now I only have access to lust, and I'm wanting to say it's wrath or envy. Yeah, I think it's envy. Oh, the only minis that I actually have access to at the moment. So, and I'll explain why more in the final thoughts. But, so, this is a one versus all game. You have one player takes control of Sin, which gets this player board right over here. Uh, you get the Apocalypse board, your Sins board, plus an Acolyte board. And there's a bunch of them right here that you get to choose from. So I'm using the Corrupted Firemen. But you have Corrupted Hobos, Corrupted Nuns, Corrupted Doctors, and Corrupted Police. And they all do their own fancy little thing. And so you're going to choose your sin, get your miniatures, and you're going to put them out on the board. And you're going to build the board. Depending on the mission you're going to do, there's a whole bunch of these. And depending on the mission you want to do, you will choose which one of these two you want to set up. You will set up the board exactly how it shows here. So it shows, you know, which tiles go where, similar to something like Zombie Side. You know, what tiles go where, and then what tokens go where. Uh, you got Abominations go here. Acolytes go here. The controller goes here. The players start there. You know, so you're going to set all these out and ready to play. There will be additional notes up here if additional things need to happen. Like, you'll say, uh... Additionally, put you know six different six these tokens out face down stuff like that. So depending on what you're gonna do, once all that's done, you're gonna take your stack of cards uh, that matches your sin type. Uh, I only have some of the cards sleeved, and again, I'll explain why later. Then you're going to take the type of mission. So we have a red mission. So you're gonna take the red cards, and you're gonna shuffle these up. These are your apocalypse cards. Because again, this is the biblical apocalypse. So everything's set up. Then the players are going to set out the upgrade cards, which are right there. You're going to put five of them out. And then each player is going to choose one of the seven heroes. As you see there, there's three of them. And in a two-player game, the faith player will choose uh, three heroes out of the seven. In a two-player game, each uh, faith player will get two heroes apiece, making four. In a four-player game, the uh, faith players will have three, one apiece. In a four play or a five-player game, four, uh, four faith players each will have their own, and then of course the sin, is, sin players always by themselves. You're going to take your, um, what is this called, the avatar, 
you'll stick him on the board because he generally comes out at specific times. Now, there are, you're going to basically build a ragtag team of seven players. If you have the base game, if I'm not mistaken, it only comes with these. Uh, but the Kickstarter version, and you'll be able to buy additional ones, uh, you're going to be able to mix match your team. And as long as you have a total of seven, that is your team of faith. So in the base game, you're going to get Carl, which is a werewolf. So you'll toss this right here uh, to show his stats here have changed. And the stats are combat. That's how many dice you roll. Uh, I think it's called a skill check or whatever, uh, which I'll touch on what that is in a minute. And that's how many dice you'll roll. And then this is your natural defense and then a special little power. Then you're going to have your corruption bar. And then your health slash corruption bonus bar, I guess you can call it. And then, of course, you know, the art. And then, so the characters chose their three, and then, so that leaves four left over. And then you're going to give each player two of these, these little activation tokens. You're going to give each player a, a city token. And then that's pretty much it. You're ready to play. The faith player, actually, let me rewind, the sin player, not the faith player, is going to get one of their reaction tokens per number of heroes. So we're playing a three hero game. The sin player has three tokens. And then the game's ready to play. So the faith players are going to decide, okay, who is going to go first? And then it's just clockwise order from then, or you just always go left or right. However you want to do it. But you're going to decide who's going to go first. So what the, uh, the faith player is going to do is they're going to take one of these tokens and you're going to flip it over to show you've done your action. So we'll do Morgana, the little vampires. And she's going to go first. And on your turn, you can get an action and then a move or a move and then an action. So sh this is her. And like I showed earlier, these are cool, many are not quality. So, I mean, they're no Kingdom Death or uh, Games Workshop, but they're really, really good quality. So, your movement is you get either move two spaces, and movement is very fluid in this game. There are no doors, there's no nothing. It's very intuitive. You know, this forms a square. The crosswalks uh, are what separate each uh, movement space. So, this is one space. This would be one space. This is one space. The intersection. The corner is one space. That's one space. That's one space. So on and so forth. Each building is a space. So, two movement can consist of one two. Very simple. Um, you have subways, the public metro, will that are always adjacent, so you have one down here and one up here, so sh I can go one, two, and that was the their two movement. Then you have an action. Your action can be to purify an area, or it can be to pick a fight. If you're in a zone that has tokens like this, then you can try to purify, which you will then roll, let me grab one of these, you will then roll this number of dice. So in this case, he would roll four because he's trying to purify. But if he's in werewolf form, he's going to roll none. So you'll roll those of the blue dice. Now, it, for each number of eyes that you roll, you get to just remove a token. Pretty sweet. But then that's your action. Or you could pick a fight. So if you're in an area with a monster, or if you're ranged, which I'll touch on in a second, uh, you can now pick a fight. So you're going to look at your combat rating. So if we look at Morgana, she is going to get three dice for combat. She has two natural defense. So she gets three dice. And then we look at we're fighting an abomination. So the sin player looks over here and sees that abominations have three dice because they have the same symbols. I'll just show you right here. They have the same symbols. You have how many dice you get. Uh, your defense, basically this is an all or nothing game for the sins. Wounds stack and are persistent on hero characters, or on the faith characters. On sin, you have to do three damage in a single hit in order to kill it, because damage does not go carry over. On top of that, of course, the sin has their own special, because of the type of sin you're playing, have their own special things. So, you know, be aware of heroes who get too close, if any hero ends their turn in the same space as one other hero, both heroes take one corruption, because lust, and your guys are making them want to get dirty with each other. So each player is going to get one die. You will get one additional die under different circumstances, uh, whether you have other hero faith characters in your space, or whole nine yards. You also can gain, 
Alright, let me grab this actually. You also can gain, because your corruption starts here. And throughout the course of the game, this corruption is going to slowly move up. Once it gets max, and if you get more corruption, you start taking it as wounds. Once you take five wounds in total, you're dead. And you have to swap out and get a new character. But throughout the course of the game, you can voluntarily just take, or if you pick a fight, or if you try to, uh, anytime you roll dice really, you can voluntarily take one corruption. If you do, you will get whatever bonus is on and before your level of corruption. So it's kind of a, it's a weird game of um, push your luck. You know, do you slowly start taking corruption? So that way you get, you know, an extra die, free defense, free attack, which I'll, because I'll explain what those symbols are. And you get all these cool things, but you're also getting closer to being fully corrupted, which, depending on the mission you're playing, other really bad things can happen if you get to full, full corruption. But, so she's going to take the one voluntary corruption, and she's going to gain another die. Now, when you roll uh, for combat, the faith dice is this cancels a corruption, which this will all make sense in a minute. Uh, this, where is it, that cancels a, a hit, just like your static defense, that does absolutely nothing in combat, which again, that's to purify, and that does a damage, and then this is your burst symbol, which uh, I'll explain more. The corrupted, or the uh, sin player, has, this is, just gives corruption, this just gives strength, and that's it. Other Oh, and then this is a burst for strength. And that's pretty much it. You have, I think, one, two blank side? No, one blank side. So this is going to be the total dice pool. You're going to roll them together. I need to put that there in here. And I think, I think that was like that. I accidentally hit it. But anyway, uh, so this is our dice result. We have one damage. This does absolutely nothing. So you're going to divide up your things. The faith player got two of these swords, so he's going to roll two more dice. If these were also swords, or any of those were swords, you would also add, you know, re-roll those, and so on and so forth. It's like the explosion mechanism from, like, Forbidden Stars and Chaos in the Old World, stuff like that. The uh, Sins player has the same thing, so they also, in this case, would get to roll another die, which got nothing. So now, her defense is two, so she just, we get rid of that. The player gets to decide what they're going to change these to. They can change them to any side on the die. So, in this case, they're going to do... Why not? They'll just do uh, this. One anti-corruption and one more damage. So now they're looking at four damage, which is enough to kill the abomination. So this would die and go off to the side. And then this would stop the corruption from going through. If it hadn't, their corruption level will go up the number of unsaved tentacles... Uh, any unsaved wounds, they will start by taking these hearts, and they will put them over these bonuses. So throughout the course of the game, you know, your first damage, you'll probably want to put on no effect. But then, if you take another damage, you've got to figure out which one of these cool bonuses do you want to permanent, permanently lose unless you can actually manage to heal. So, you know, oh yeah, I don't, I don't need the defense, okay, I won't, I probably won't need this for a while and I won't need this. So, you know, that would be their new wound. So if they're all the way up here, they take Voluntary Corruption, they're only getting three of their uh, of all of their benefits. So it's a pretty neat little system. So that's, in a nutshell, kind of how fighting works. Once the players, uh, once the player activates their one thing and they resolve everything that they're going to be doing, the uh, Faith, or not the Faith, I keep wanting to call them Faith, the Sins player now gets to react. They have their three tokens like this. After each player's uh, reaction, they can flip one of their tokens, and they basically get to do the same thing that a player gets to do, except, of course, they can't purify. So, I would go, okay, I'll, I'll flip over reaction, and I'll take this guy and make him go one, two, now we're going to fight. So now I fight you. And fighting is always dangerous on both sides, regardless of who started the fight, because... Like, I could start a fight, and then my controller just dies. Or, yeah, the yeah he's the controller. My controller just dies, because he misjudged the situation. So, that's basically how a player's turn is going to go. And you're going to keep going around and around and around and around until all of the players have used all their tokens. There's a couple other uh, minor things. In the beginning of the game, this tiny little deck, the Sins player, is going to draw five of them. And these are nasty little cards that the Sins player gets to use. And you can only play one of these per player turn, and that includes 
uh, a reaction. So, you know, you have cards that'll be like uh, start of the first uh, the first hero's turn, the start of the hero's turn. And it'll say when they're allowed to be played and like what they do. And they're pretty mean cards. These are a very uh, good power that the sin player has. The players, the faith players, have a city token. And if you notice on the board here, I don't know if you can see, you have a little, looks like a little city token symbol and then small circles next to it. Throughout your turn, you can, you don't have to stop your move doing it. You, you could literally just drop it down at any time as long as you are in a building. You could take this once per whole round and a round is until everybody's act, uh, activation or all of the faith players activation tokens are turned over. You can take this and you can put it in the space and then you will do everything, and you must do everything, that is there. So, these two here, for example, they get rid of corruption. This here allows you to get items from the reserve, or I can't remember what that's called, the upgrade stack, I guess. Uh, this allows you to move the orbital satellite, which I'll explain in a second. This allows you to heal. Um, I think that's it. Uh, oh, this over here, which I don't know if you can see, gives you uh, an extra turn token that you can spend. And so that's pretty cool, but then once it's down, it's down until the whole round is over. And then now, you know, there's a lot of times, every time, a lot of times we've played, there'll be times you're like, crap, I really need that token right now, but you used it. Now, this satellite is pretty cool. The way this thing works is if you activate the little thing that has the little satellite dish on it, this moves just like players, but ignores pretty much everything. When you activate it, you get to move it two spaces as well and it doesn't matter where it is it could be inside of a building out on a street and you can just kill either an acolyte or a uh, an abomination in that square you no know, roll no nothing you just boom kill it you can't do it to special characters you can't do it to the controller um, you can't do it to the avatar stuff like that um, but that's essentially how a turn goes there's a few other things uh, like your the spawning nests where at the end of your round the player is going to get to put more monsters out in the nests equal to the number of players uh, this apocalypse track here throughout the course of the game is going to slowly move down and as the game goes on it get the uh, uh, sins player gets stronger and stronger because all of these abilities stack you're going to be revealing apocalypse cards and summon additional monsters and plus one reaction tokens every round stuff like that they're just really mean uh, mean abilities that you're just slowly going to be able to start gaining. And those Apocalypse cards, you might be able to summon the, you know, Legally Distinct Pinhead, or, you know, Cenobites, basically. And these are the Hell Club members that are basically have summoned the, uh, these demons spawn to the world. Or you get just static buffs that, you know, each abomination gains just gains a free fist in a fight, so that makes them a lot more dangerous. Or they can move one extra space, which is huge. Or you know, just all kinds of different abilities that you just can do. So, how is the game won? Uh, like I mentioned, as the sins player, uh, every time I kill a faith player, they have to they get rid of their board and they have to choose a new one from the remaining four as when the game starts in this scenario or in this situation. If they ever have to replace a hero and can't, they just lose. So effectively, I have to kill them five times in in this scenario because they have three. No, so it'd be yeah, five times. So because they have three, there's four heroes remaining. I would have to kill them a fifth time for them to have to replenish and not be able to. However, the uh, faith player has this chart here, and you're going to start off here. You have start of round, things that happen, end of rounds, things that happen, any other special rules for the mission, and then you're going to start here. And for example, here it says gear up, equipped number of heroes, upgrade cards. So in this case, three heroes. So either one would have to be equipped all three different pieces, or three with one, or two and one, or however you want to do it, as long as you have e equipped uh, equipment cards equal to the number of players you would complete this, and it's immediate, so you can complete multiple objectives in a single round. So as soon as they do this, because this is a branching path, they now have to choose which one of these two they want. So do they want to destroy uh, three abominations in fights in the same round, or do they want to remove three pentagram tokens from the, mar uh, from the monster free spaces? 
So they're going to choose one of these two once they complete it. It'll move down here. It says you know, summon the avatar. So the Sins player will get to toss this bad boy out and do some damage because this thing has seven attack dice and seven defense, which getting seven wounds on something is a lot harder said than done. And to do so, generally, you're having to take a bunch of corruption. But anyways, uh, so this will happen. Then, you know, destroy them all. Uh, the Sins player marks three monsters. Uh, well, number of heroes worth of monsters, destroy all the marked monsters, and then they win. Once they complete that, they have just won. This right here is to keep track of anything, you know, whatever you're needing to keep track of based on missions. So that basically is the game. There's a lot, uh, a lot of other things I haven't explained. The game is, there's a lot that you need to learn, but once you learn, the game is actually really simple. Like learning that Whenever you move into and out of a fire space, you're going to take fire damage. So if somebody were to move in here and out of here, that's two dice that I'm going to get to roll. And for each fist, they just take a damage. So fire is pretty dirty. And why did I do that? Fire is pretty nasty. And then you have corruption tokens, which work basically the exact same way, but tentacles give them corruption. These right here are uh, strategic points, I guess you can call them. At the end of the round, once everybody's tokens are all spent, for each one of these that does not have a hero on it, it uh, doesn't matter if there's a monster there, but if there's a hero in the same space, the Sins player just gets to draw another one of these cards. So in this case, I would draw two more. Anyways, the Sin player would draw two more of these, in this case, and those are huge. Those, those things hurt. And last but not least, uh, you have the Pentagram token, which just gives the Sin player another die if fights are done there. And I lied, not last but not least, you have three more tokens. You have this guy, basically allows a player, you can pick him up during your movement for free, put him on your player board. With this guy, you get to ignore uh, one corruption or one fire. This right here is the police chief. You would get, um, what is it, one more attack die. This right here, you can pick it up, and this just gives you one more speed. And that's really it for the game. I don't think there's anything else. I didn't touch, get too in depth of how to play, but that's basically it. You should have the general idea of how the game's played. You're going to go keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over again until one side or the other wins. So let's just go straight over to my final thoughts, shall we? All right. Other seven sins. I'm going to start off by saying I actually really, really enjoy the game. It's not without its problems, but I, overall, I do really like the game. Now, I mentioned why uh, that I'll uh, explain why I'm using l the Lust Sin when it doesn't come in the base box. And I'm not going to go in the nitty gritty, but basically, I'm not getting my copy until next month because, according to Coolmania or not, I didn't fill out the pledge manager until it was too late, even though I'm pretty sure I did. But they said I didn't, so then I had to do it again, and I couldn't prove it. So I kind of got screwed, and a buddy of mine just let me borrow his, and the only two sins he brought were, I think it was Envy and Lust, or two of the sins that not in the game. So Lust and one other one. That's not in the base box. So, um, if you didn't kickstart it, you're only going to be getting in those two sins, and you'll have to probably buy the other ones separately, which kind of sucks. Uh, cool Mini or Not is, I've what I've noticed, is very prone of, if you didn't kickstart it, you're only going to get like half of the game. Uh, I found that out with Arcadia Quest. But uh, overall, the game, though, is really cool. I like how the Sins player is going to get three actions in the two-player setup, like here with only three heroes. Sins player is going to get three actions. The Faith player is going to get six. So the Faith or the Sin player is constantly thinking, okay, I've got to, I only have these three times I'm going to get to react. I need to use them sparingly and very wisely, and you don't jump the gun and go, ah, oh, well, screw you, and bring a guy in. You gotta be very, pardon me, you gotta be very careful with when you use them. But on the other side, the faith player is sitting there thinking as they're doing their thing, and they're whispering and talking back and forth, you know, if the sin player reacts to this, I'm screwed. And you're trying to play off, hopefully the sin player doesn't see this, and you're moving and whatnot. Now, I've seen people com been complaining about the that kind of ruins the pacing of the game, which it does. Because the game is very prone to the Sims player is going to go, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and activate this, and I'll move out here, and I'll drop my token here, do this, and then we're going to fight, and I'm going to kill this guy. Okay? Well, I'm going to react to that. Like, the next player is getting ready to do the turn, you go, no, no, wait, I'm going to go ahead and use my reaction token. Okay? So you do your thing, and you fight, and then, okay. 
then the player, you're done, then the next player starts taking their turn, you go, wait, wait, start of the player's turn, and so you're constantly butting in and just kind of being annoying, and I honestly, I like that, because it kind of makes it tense. I can definitely see how to be annoying, and it does break the pacing of the game, but I don't see that as a problem. I see, I feel that it's somewhat thematic, and it makes it tense. The game's initial learning curve is pretty steep. Um, but the game, once you understand the basics of the game, when I know nowadays there's a lot of games that do this, once you understand the basics, the game's super simple to play. Like, I'm pretty sure if my daughter can understand the, the few, my nine-year-old, if she can understand how the game, the initial stuff works, I'm pretty sure she can play the game. It's not overly complicated, it's pretty streamlined, and it's it's fairly simple to play, and it only plays it plays in less than two hours. Hell, it takes 20 minutes to set the board up, so you're looking at two hours total in and out of the box. So, but overall, like I really enjoy it. Uh, the artwork's awesome. The components, of course, it's cool mini or not, it's gonna be stellar. You know, it's no Kingdom Death or Games Workshop or anything, but it's still top notch in my opinion. Um, None of the models are bent, like for example, Blood Rage that I have right here. Uh, a couple of my ice giants are bent, I need to soak them in hot water and whatnot. I, I still haven't done that, I've had the game for a year now, but uh, yeah, about a year. But still haven't done it. None of the models so far that I've noticed have that issue with this. Uh, they're all really good quality. You, of course, have little snap on color bases. I plan on painting mine. Um, there's two big issues that I do have with the game, however. Um, the first one is, there's no campaign or story mode at all. It's their one-shot missions, and that's it. Which kind of sucks. Sorry, there's three things that I have a problem with, but so it kind of sucks. I would have liked to have seen, because, like, I get it. The sins or the hero player is going to have seven people. Generally speaking, they're all going to die, and you're going to be on your last three or four dudes when the game is over. Because the game only is going to last about two rounds. Every game we played last, I think the longest one we had was three rounds. Yeah. So the game is plays reasonably quick and you're going to lose a lot of people. But I would have liked to have seen some kind of campaign mode. Like if you have multiple units or multiple squads, you can build an entire team of like, I don't know, 20 people. And your upgrades carry. Or some carry over or something like that. That way... You know, you and you got to complete five missions or four missions or something, and that way you have a little bit of persistency and you you have a little bit of a different like a campaign that you kind of get to play, and the story is very loose. It's thematic, but it's very loosely tied in story, so that kind of sucks. Like I like the story of a game and getting immersed into the game and invested and stuff like that, but that's a minor gripe. I mean, the game is still solid without it. Uh, another gripe that I do have is. The game feels like it could be very swingy to the faith side. Now, with that said, we've played the game five times so far. One time, the Sins player completely ruined the faith players. And that was because we were playing the final mission, which is heavily weighted towards Sin. The other one is the faith players completely dominated um, the Sin player. I was on the faith at this time. Um... That's because we rolled insanely good. And then the other three games, they came down to a single dice roll every time. It was you're rolling, you're shaking the dice going, if I win, or if I, if I win this, this fight, we win. If you win, it's basically whoever wins this fight is going to win the game. So, it's got a weird balance to it. Uh, however, what I've noticed, granted, I've only played five games, but what I've noticed is it, it's easier for the game to sway heavily towards the side of Faith than it is for the side of the Sin player. Sin player has very small margin of error, so you need the most experienced player playing the Sin player, in my opinion. Because if you make too big of a mistake as the Sin player, you've assured your loss. Because there's a lot more wiggle room in the faith player's side. You, if you screw up, it's not that big of a deal. So as long as you're not completely incompetent, it's not that big of a deal if you make a little minor mistakes here and there. It could still lose you the game, however. It's just easier for it to sway heavily towards the side of faith. Um, but like I said, it hasn't been that big of a deal. And out of five games, it's only swayed heavily one side or the other. And we knew 
that the final mission was going to sway heavily towards the the uh, sin side. We knew that going into it, like we were looking through it, going, "Holy crap, this mission's insane!" We're like, "Let's try it." So we knew that. But the other ones were playing the standard missions. Um, so again, that's not really that bad, bad of a thing. Now, my last problem that I have with the game, which this is more of a personal issue. I personally like to try to keep all of my expansions for the games that I get in the same box. Like, to the point where if an expansion won't fit in the box, probably won't buy the expansion. I like that when I go to the shop, all I have to do is grab just this box and go. I don't have to grab anything else. Just grab the box, go, let's play Blood Rage today. Or, you know, um, Eons, or Battlestar Galactica, or any of the other games... Uh, Elder Tor, or any of the other games that I have uh, all the expansions for, I like to just be able to grab the box and go. And not have to worry about, okay, which expansion are we playing, yada yada yada. There is no way in a cold day in hell everything's fitting in this box. Now, when you get all the expansions, your tile stack is this big for just the, the terrain tiles. You're only ever going to use ten of them, uh, like max, if you're using the base game. Because the expansions come with books that show alternate setups, stuff like that, where you use all these other tiles. So, I'm going to try to store everything that's not like the base ten tiles. I'm going to store those probably in my closet, and or a shed or something. I'm going to store those elsewhere. Um, I'm going to keep all the sins in the box. I'm going to only keep like two or three of the um, faith teams in the main box with their minis. And then I'm going to keep one of the Sin monster miniatures and one of the Acolyte miniatures in the box. Because they could really be used for anything. Because it's very clear which one's the um, Avatar, which one's the Controller, and which one's the Abominations, and which one are the Acolytes. Very clear. So, it's just aesthetics. So it does not matter about the miniature at all. So I'll probably keep that in there. That way... I could just grab the game and we can play and you'll have access to you know, three or four different squads or something. Um, and that's even after I paint it. It should still fit. Then I'll keep the rest of it in the box and while we're here, I don't have to transfer that anywhere. I can just pull out the other stuff and we can use the actual miniatures while we're here. But it allows me to transport it. That's a minor gripe. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, that's really dumb. Like, I'm the guy who doesn't like, um, uh, was it something House on the Hill? I hate that game because I can't send the miniatures. That is really the only reason why I don't like that game. So, uh, so it's a minor gripe. You may share the gripe with me, but I feel it's something I want to let people know because in case you're like me, that's going to be something that's going to bother the crap out of you. But overall, I really, really like the game. It's, it's simple once you learn how to play, but the game is great. It's got a really neat, uh, really, from what I've seen, a really neat balancing act to it because both sides are going to feel unfair. Every game we've played, both sides are looking at the board going, How the hell is that fair? That is the biggest crock that I've ever seen. You know, it's the Sins player. You're, there's going to be a point in the board, you're going to look at, you're in the game, you're going to look at the board, and you're going to go, I have like four acolytes left, and I have to kill two heroes. How is this possible? This is bull. And in the end of the round, you drop out a whole bunch more things, and you've corrupted half of their team, and you go, Okay. But then the flip side of that coin. The sin, the faith player, they you know, it's very easy for a faith, uh, faith player to just insta gib, really easy. If they get a bad dice roll, they will just insta gib really easily, and that's happened a couple times. And you're just like, how the hell am I supposed to compete with that? You know, especially you go up against the, um, the big guy. I can't remember what his name is all of a sudden, but the avatar. You go against the avatar. That's seven dice, plus any additional dice for any bonuses. So you just march him with like the controller you're getting like 11 dice and it's insane you could just boom one shot somebody so as the faith player you're also looking at the board going how is this fair this is the biggest crock and so both sides feel really unfair but most of our games boil down to a single dice roll where you're like uh, i gotta kill you or you kill me and that's pretty much how it's gonna happen so it's a really good game uh pick it up uh, it's going to be a personal decision whether or not just the two uh, sins are going to be worth it. I think it's probably going to be a hundred bucks. I I don't know. Um, I might. I kind of think it's worth it, but because all the sin special powers aren't huge, they're just minor annoyances and screw with how the heroes play. So like, uh, there's one of the sins, for example, lust. If the team the they stay together, 
they get hurt. So that means they don't get that extra die, and a lot of the hero powers are like, um, ignore damage during combat. Uh, if on anybody else that's in your square. So you've just rendered his ability kind of pointless. Or there's another sin that's like, if heroes are fighting by themselves. I'm sorry, the cat's playing with the door. But, um, you know, if, if any of the heroes are by themselves, they just take a corruption or something. And so you're forcing the players into certain predicaments that they don't want to have to be in. That's really all the different sins do. Um, but then the cards complement those, you know, force players it either to be together or whatnot. So that is pretty cool. Other than that, uh, this video has turned into a rant and has kind of gone on a lot longer than I wanted it to. Anyways, uh, that is the other seven sins. Uh, if you like my show, you can support me on Patreon. I'll have a link up here and I will have a link down in the description. And I will see you guys next time in the quarantine.